Hello, and welcome to the next Synergist EDS installment regarding your Autodesk account. Today's topic is generating your network license file under your Autodesk account. This session is merely for those who have been assigned the contract manager or software coordinator role for your subscription, maintenance plan, or contracts. However, anybody in your organization can benefit from this session. But before we walk through the steps and how to do this, let's go over a few things. As I stated just a few minutes ago, only those who have been assigned the contract manager or software coordinator role has the ability to do this. But there are some exceptions to this. For example, your authorized Autodesk reseller can generate the license file as well as Autodesk or through the Autodesk virtual agent. In addition, anyone having an Autodesk account associated to your subscription or contract can generate a license file through the Autodesk Register Once website. The factors of generating a license file is basically having a server or a PC, what license model type you're going to be used, and we're going to talk about that here shortly, and the name and physical address of the server or PC holding this license manager and license file. If you already have an existing license file, this file could be useful in collecting the necessary data to generate the new license file. There are three different licensing models, single, redundant, and distributed. Single license model is the most common one, but it has its disadvantage. In fact, each licensing model has its pros and cons, and you must choose which one works for your infrastructure. With the single license model, your licenses are managed under one license manager. For redundant, you basically have three servers hosting your entire license file, and two of those servers must always be in operation for this fail-safe licensing mechanism to function. The redundant model is the least common one. The distributed model allows you to distribute your license quantity over multiple license manager. This model can act as taking your license quantity and splitting them up under a single license model concept, or you could have a user point to each server and their order determines where to look for a license. If the license can't be pulled from a given server, they would bounce to another server to get a license. When the contract manager and software coordinator have access to the same contracts or network-based products, the process of generating a license file is simple through those accounts or roles. When you start having different software coordinators assigned to your network or multi-user products, kind of like what's shown here, it may be easier for the contract manager to access their Autodesk account and generate the license file. But when individuals in your organizations are assigned to different contracts, kind of like what this chart is showing here, you will most likely have to manage your overall license file by combining them into a single license file. I am the software coordinator for our contract, so what I've done is I've logged into my Autodesk account and selected all products and services. When I go to generate a network license file for my products, I don't have to do it for each individual. All I have to do is find one of the products that is network-based, and then I can generate the network license file based on just that given product, a couple of products, or all my products. So for example, my Vault Professional is a subscription multi-user or network base. So a couple ways to generate the network license file is basically I can go over to the More Action button, click on it, and say Generate Network License File. Or I can expand the product by either clicking here or clicking on the header and then say Generate Network License File. The first question that's going to be asked is the, the license server model you're going to do. We've already kind of talked about this. So we're going to start off just going walking through the single server. So I'm going to click the single server. Then I'm going to put in the name of the server or PC, and then the MAC address. All right. So I have the MAC address in another file, so I'm just going to copy and paste. All right. When you enter the MAC address, it is without the dashes. Then from here, I can say select and add products to the server. So I'm going to click on it. 
These are all the products that I'm entitled to that are network-based. So I can go and say I want to pick all these, or I can do the select all, however you want to do it. And then I'm going to say add select. And as you can see, all those products are added to my list. All right, I'm only doing a single license server, so I'm putting all my product on a given license model. All right, and now we're going to say get license file. If you are using the redundant server licensing model, you're going to pick the middle option, and then you're going to enter the primary server name of your redundant server. So I'm going to put that in and its MAC address. I have my MAC address in a separate file, so I'm just going to copy and paste them over. Then I'm going to enter the next server name, or my first redundant one, and its MAC, MAC address. And then the redundant server of two. and its MAC address. From there, we are going to select on add, select and add our products just like we did before. I'm going to say select all this time, and then I'm going to say add select. And then from there, I can do get license file. In the distributed model, we're going to pick the last option. We're going to put in the server name. And then MAC address. Again, like I said, I have my MAC address in a, another file, so I'm just going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to select and add the products to the server. So I'm going to click on it. And this time, for my Vault Professional, I want it to split five seats of this for this given server. So I'm going to click on it. So my Vault Professional, add select. And then it's going to ask me how many seats I want. So I'm just going to add, say, five seats. I can add other products to the server, or I can add another server. So I'm going to come in here. There's two. Copy and paste my MAC address. Select my products again. So I'm going to take this Vault Professional again. And this time, because I have 25 seats and I only have 20 seats left, I'm going to put 21 seats. Now, as you can see, I only have 25 seats, so it does and says, oh, wait a minute, you're trying to allocate more license than what you have. So we're going to reduce this back to 20, and now we're going to hit OK. And then from there, we're going to generate or get the network license file. And finally, when you select to get the network license file, a message like this will appear. From here, you can copy the info to the Windows clipboard or save it to an external file. In addition, when you select to send and close, an email with the license file will be sent to the individual indicated here and to any other individuals you may specify. For the distributed license model concept, the process would repeat for each server you entered. And here's an example of the email that you would receive with the license file attached to it. Last topic before we wrap this session up. When dealing with subscription-based product, the license file is generated based on the terms that you currently have, meaning these products will expire at a future date and a new license file will need to be generated based on the new terms or your renewal. However, when the subscription is renewed, the contract manager will receive an email with the updated license file. There you have it, a look into how you generate a license file through your Autodesk account. Stay tuned for additional sessions on your Autodesk account.